Welcome to part two of a three-part blog on automatic uh, view representation creation with iLogic in Inventor. So part one was automatically creating your view reps and this is part two to automatically update those view reps that you've created. Okay, so we're back in our kit car model. I've actually deleted the representations we automatically created previously. But what we'll see here is that we've now got four iLogic rules in here. These are the two we looked at before to create the reps based on either contains or begins with criteria. And now we're going to have a rule to update both of those separately. So I've placed all four of these rules on my form that we used before, my auto view reps form here. So if I click on that, we can see what we've got. So this will be creating and updating contains view representations. And this will be creating and updating uh, view representations based on a part number begins with criteria. Okay, so we haven't got any um, uh, automatically created view reps in here yet. So let's just see what happens if we try and update them when they don't exist. So if I try and update the contains view reps, we'll see it will tell me no view reps exist. Please create them first. So that's great. And the same if I hit begins, no begins view reps exist. Please create view reps first. So each of these update rules are actually looking for contains or begins with um, view reps that have already been created to try and update them. So we'll do that, we'll create a couple and then we'll look at updating them. So first off we'll start with a contains and uh, I'm going to put a capital P in there for my purchased parts and we'll create a view rep for those first. Okay, do I want to add another view rep? No, I'm fine with this at the moment, so I'm going to click no. We'll just have one contains, one in there, so we see we've got our quantities in there. Same as before, I'm going to add a begins uh, view rep in here. So see the previous blog if you're not sure about this. So I'm going to say begins with one there, and that's going to build my view rep for me. Okay, I'm going to add one more in here, uh, begins with two as well. So this will be some of my suspension components, my manufactured components here. Okay, so I'm done with that now. I'm gonna click done here. So we've got our view reps, contains P, begins with one, begins with two. And those are all uh, fully functional and fully created there. Okay. So now, uh, most of the time, you're gonna be using view reps on a drawing. So let's head over to a drawing and see uh, see what we can do with that. So if I go to my race car drawing, let's put a base view on here and we can choose the view rep that we want to create of. So you can see that changing there. If I click on begins with one, make sure it's associative, make sure my scale is correct and just chuck a couple of uh, drawing views down there. So that's fine. I, I can dimension this up, but uh, we're going to head back to our assembly now. So let's say that we're going to make a change in here. I'll go back to the master view rep for now. Um, we're going to add a couple of wing mirrors in here. So I'm going to find these components. I'm just going to place them as usual. Got my two wing mirrors here. I can chuck those into the assembly. I can then use my nice uh, ground and root component uh, tool here. I can select those, hit ground and root component, and these mirrors all have fortunately been modeled on assembly coordinates so they'll snap right into place for me so that's nice my mirrors are all there um, however if I look through my view reps of course as these view reps are locked um, that view rep despite the fact that the wing mirrors begin with one both of them um, as we can see here um, they're not coming into the view rep uh, begins one because it's locked and it needs updating Okay, so if I go back to the master view rep, I don't have to be in the master view rep, I can do this in any one that I want. If I try um, my update tool, so I could update the contains ones, but I know that nothing's changed in the contains ones. Although actually it has, hasn't it? We've got contains P and these are also purchase parts. So we'll do that first. I'll update the contains one and we'll see what we've got there. So you can see those wing mirrors have appeared in there. 
one view rep's been updated. So the thing to note here is that this button, or this rule rather, um, will update any contains rule, uh, contains view reps, and this button will update any begins ones. So we have only updated one, this one here. So I'll click OK. Let's update our begins um, view rep. And that will update both of these. So we should say it's updated two. And we should then have our wing mirror added to the begins one view rep there. So two reps have been updated as expected. If I click done there, then we can go and we can see, okay, so the wing mirrors have been added as a purchase part to this view rep and also to uh, the begins with one view rep, they've been added into there and locked again afterwards. So that's nice and quick. We've got our, our view reps updated there. If we go back to our drawing and we'll give it a second to update and we should get the wing mirrors appearing on there. Okay, that seems to have worked correctly. If we zoom in, we can see those wing mirrors and that view rep has been successfully updated. Um, if I head back to the assembly now, we'll just make another change, uh, another um, exaggerated change just to see exactly what's going on here. So if I uh, copy and paste this component and let's do something quite extreme and just add quite a lot of these uh, wing mirror components here just to see what's going on with this, just for fun really. Um, now if I go to my view rep rule and if I update um, my begins with view reps, then you should see those wing mirrors being added in here. Okay, so did you see that added it added them in there for me? And it should tell me that two view reps have been updated. So if I click done there, and if we head back to our drawing and let that update, then we should see this working correctly. Okay, so that's updated fine there, that view rep. Obviously it's updated the other view reps as well. So the important thing to notice if we go back to the assembly is that it's not recreating these view reps when it updates them, it's just updating it. So any view um, drawing views in your drawings will still remain intact and they will still reference the correct view representation. Okay, so I hope you found this helpful. This is part two. Part three, we'll be looking at some code to automatically check for you whether any view reps need updating or not, so that you don't have to manually uh, do that yourself. Okay, hope you find this helpful. Thanks very much.